welcome. My name is Sakari Keskitalo. I'm the chief operating officer at the Codership. And the um, Galera cluster offers you high availability, scalability for MySQL, MariaDB, and Percona database. It protects your Keystone, Nova, Neutron data. Your services would be up and running 24-7. Before doing Galera cluster, we actually uh, developed uh, three other MySQL cluster. Seven years ago, we found a uh, academic research about certification-based replication, and we started to develop Galera cluster. It's a fundamentally new way to do high availability, a multi-master based on synchronous replication. Today, we have thousands of users of Galera Cluster. And one of the early adapters of Galera Cluster in OpenStack distributions is Mirantis. And that's why I have asked Jay Pipes from Mirantis to join us for the presentations. So please welcome Jay Pipes. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have nearly, nearly as great an accent as Sakari <laughs> does. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk today. Uh, about some of my experiences in the field um, in structuring uh, the, the database schema, uh, the data layer within OpenStack deployments. And uh, I'm going to go really quickly, so at the end we can have some questions. All right, so we're going to talk about where to put data and where Galera makes sense and where it does not make sense. The thing that you want to uh, think about when you're designing your deployment uh, and the database servers that are going to service Nova, Neutron, Keystone, Cinder, all, all of the OpenStack services, is the uh, patterns of both uh, read and write patterns and the types of data that go into the different databases. The patterns that you identify will instruct you how to group data uh, into different database clusters and different schemas. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this. We're going to talk about the frequency in which certain queries are done, the read to write ratio for particular types of data is very different between Neutron and Keystone and Cinder. Um, caching mechanisms are all different, so uh, especially with, with Keystone, for instance, uh, you, you can store tokens, authentication tokens, in a completely different data store uh, than your identity data. So uh, understanding all those kind of things go into how you structure your database deployment. Um, Keystone, let's go right into it. It's used by all the other components. Uh, typically, you want the identity information, so assignments, roles, users, uh, projects. It used to be called tenants, now it's projects. Uh, all that information, you want it to be shared globally across all of your deployment zones and regions. Um, you can use, like I said earlier, different drivers for different types of data within Keystone. Um, what we typically recommend is not storing the tokens in uh, SQL databases. Uh, we at AT&T, at my previous position, we set up uh, the memcache driver for tokens. Uh, it was a lot faster, and the token table in the database can grow substantially, especially if you're using UUID tokens and not uh, public key infrastructure. Um, the catalog information, which is the service catalog, service endpoints, that kind of thing, it's pretty much static read-only information. So you can actually set the uh, templated driver for the service catalog, and so you never even hit the database at all. Uh, obviously, a lot of the information within Keystone is uh, read-heavy. It's not like, I mean, we're not Facebook, right, and adding millions of users every hour or whatever it is. Um, so typically you have uh, a small uh, number of writes to the Keystone uh, user database and uh, a whole lot of reads. Glance is the image service. It has a registry database that stores uh, metadata about the images and, and snapshots that are stored within the backend uh, file or object storage. Um, today, I'm, I'm not going to be talking about the storage of the block data. I'm just talking about the registry database, the, the metadata. 
Um, it has some similar properties to the Keystone user uh, role identity information in that it's written very infrequently and read quite a bit, that the metadata about images. Uh, it's also a really small amount of data, relatively, right? The, uh, the one thing that uh, when, you, when you do a deployment of OpenStack that, that spans multiple regions or availability zones, you need to decide whether you're going to share the image registry database across regions. Uh, one of the, the reasons we chose to uh, share the image registry across regions was so that someone could do a snapshot of their instance in region A, and then the snapshot would show up in their, their list of images and snapshots in another region, and they could launch that, that uh, snapshot immediately. So it, uh, it, it worked out very well to, have a, a, to, to share the data across regions for, for, for a glance. Um, because Keystone, uh, Keystone's user and, uh, and role information and Glance's registry database, they share very similar read to write ratios and uh, the amount of data and type of data that's stored in those databases. We recommend actually to group them together, to put them in one single database cluster. Galera works out really, really well for the, the pairing of the Glance registry database and Keystone user information, especially across the WAN. So uh, a lot of people think that, oh, you know, this is high latency links across the WAN, you know, the synchronously replicated database cluster is, is not a good solution for that. I actually thought that uh, before we started using Galera cluster across the WAN. Uh, when I left AT&T, we had 12 uh, multi-writers, 12 uh, Galera nodes serving the Glance registry and Keystone databases across uh, data centers throughout the US uh, when replicated. Uh, because it's very read intensive and not a whole lot of writes, it's actually a perfect use case for a uh, Galera cluster over, over WAN links. Great diagram, isn't it? <laughs> we'll build on this. All right, so Nova is the compute layer within OpenStack. Uh, it has a vastly different uh, data usage patterns and, and write frequency than Keystone or Glance. Um, within uh, a Nova availability zone, or a failure domain, you have uh, a, an isolated database, right? So you're not sharing uh, instances information from one availability zone to another, because the failure domain is, is the availability zone. Um, there are many, many more tables within Nova than, than Keystone or Glance, and it's highly relational data, right? Um, let's see. Uh, it's not shared between the regions, like I said, and all of the database queries are throttled through something called the Nova Conductor Service. So it used to be that all the Nova Compute Workers, which are the, th you know, the, the daemons that actually help spin up and, and orchestrate the virtual machines on the resource provider hosts, that all of those hosts would connect into the databases directly. Well, once you get you know, into thousands and thousands of compute nodes, each consuming one or more database connections, that quickly becomes problematic. And so the Nova Conductor Service is um, uh, the way that Nova throttles all of those distributed database queries through the message queue and then into the database from the Nova Conductor Service. In Nova, we delete things very rarely. <laughs> we use a, something called soft delete. So when you delete or terminate an instance, we actually don't delete the row from the table. We update it to a deleted state. And then uh, during some periodic intervals, uh, we will archive those, those, record, those deleted records into a shadow table. So this type of pattern of not deleting things and instead updating rows causes some very interesting things to go on within the, the Nova database schema. One of those things is that the, the unique constraints on most tables are not just like a primary key. It's the primary key and then a deleted status column and then a deleted ID. It's really, really weird. But it causes a lot of, a lot of issues with, uh, with locking and, and, and joins. Neutron. 
kind of similar to Nova in a couple ways. Uh, the, you don't share data across availability zones with the Neutron database. Um, it, it has a few more tables than, than Glance and Keystone, not nearly as many as Nova. Um, and the amount uh, of data within the Neutron database isn't, isn't stunning, right? You're generally reading smaller data sets. Well, what we did find um, is that there, there are certain tables within Neutron that are highly contentious uh, with writes, that, that uh, f specifically when you're doing IP address uh, management and, and assignment. So there are a couple places within the Neutron database code that use uh, something called select for update, which um, uh, in normal MySQL uh, world w will, within InnoDB, will take a, a bunch of locks on, on table rows. Well, with the way that Galera works, uh, Galera only replicates changes to things. It doesn't actually replicate those internal to InnoDB record locks. And so um, Galera has issues with uh, applications that use select for update. And uh, if, if you want some more information on uh, how that manifests itself in real world database benchmarks, uh, feel free to check out uh, my presentation with Peter Boros uh, we have the slides uh, up, I believe, on, on Percona.com. Uh, but uh, very interesting uh, how the Neutron database uh, performs compared to, to Nova. Cinder is very similar, actually, to, to Glance. We have metadata that's stored about volumes in the database. Uh, but unlike Glance, the uh, Cinder database is local to a region. It's not shared. Um, it's not shared data. So MySQL Galera is actually a, a pretty good fit as well for Nova, Neutron, and Cinder. We, at, at AT&T, we had a four-node Galera cluster for each region that would service the Nova, Neutron, and Cinder databases. Uh, it worked really well in multi-writer mode. A lot of people think, oh, well, you, you have to run a single writer to avoid issues with lock contention and, and deadlocks. Uh, we ran it in production with multi-writers, and uh, I can count on like one hand the, uh, the amount of problems that we had with deadlocks. Um, so a uh, sort of overview of, of how I like to recommend setting things up is, again, at the top, you have that globally replicated Galera cluster. Even across a WAN, it works really well, because you have very high read, low write type data that's very similar in its access patterns. And then you've got the Nova, Cinder, and Neutron databases in its own Galera cluster um, within each availability zone. And then you've got the message queue that's coordinating stuff between all of the Nova compute workers. Solometer. How many people have Solometer actually installed in production and running? One person. Do you happen to use the SQL driver? Yes, I don't recommend it. <laughs> So, uh, Solometer is extremely write intensive. Um, there's a couple things about the Solometer architecture where it's, it, it writes a lot of duplicative data into uh, the tables. And if you try and use the SQL driver for Solometer instead of the MongoDB uh, or HBase drivers, it, it quickly shows, uh, shows some issues on, on the database schema level. And uh, you can quickly uh, get almost a non-functional uh, Solometer API endpoint. Um, there are some issues with the database schema in Solometer. I know the guys on the Solometer team are actively working to redesign some of this stuff, so I'm not going to bitch too much about that. So do not use MySQL Galera cl cluster <laughs> for this type of workload. It just doesn't make much sense. It's extremely write intensive. We're talking like uh, 2,000 compute nodes, let's say 10,000 VMs. You could easily be pumping 200,000 records an hour, right? And it just, it's just not uh, an ideal type of database uh, system for that type of workload. Um, MongoDB is actually a, a much better choice. It's, I believe it's the default now. We kind of switched between SQL default and then back to Mongo uh, for some licensing fears or FUD. 
Um, but MongoDB or HBase are, are what I would recommend for, for Solometer, um, and definitely not uh, MySQL Galera cluster. I just take it from me, I tried it, uh, not a good fit. So. so what does it look like? Final thing, Solometer, we put that into a separate uh, MongoDB store. Um, and this architecture is essentially marrying similar types of data to specific database clusters and servers that make sense for that type of data and that data write and read pattern. So once, so go back, so this is one zone, the top is the global, globally distributed, and then you just create more deployment zones. You're gonna replicate over the WAN the Glance and Keystone stuff, and within each of the zones you'll have your local Neutron, Nova, and, and Cinder Galera cluster. So you have basically global cluster, and then a Galera cluster for the Neutron, Nova, and Cinder stuff within each availability zone because that's where the, the failure uh, mode is. So that's really all I've got. Uh, I do want to leave some time for questions, because I'm sure you have some. Uh, but remember to group your storage based on the, the pattern of data, reads and writes, and the types of data that are stored in that particular database. And don't be afraid to think outside the box and not just put everything in one single database and then try and replicate that either using mass, you know, MySQL master slave standard replication or Galera cluster or whatever. Just think in terms of grouping like data together. So that's the end of my slides. Would anyone like to ask some questions? Uh, maybe how 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 do you guys uh, do your database setups? Do you have everything in a single database? Do you group Glance, Keystone, Nova, Neutron all together? Do you split them out into you know a global store? Do you use LDAP you know for Keystone? Um, what kind of things have people run into? It's a tough crowd. Okay, well, does anyone have any questions for me? Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, say it. The like data. Like data, right. Right, so the, the question is how, how do you actually determine what data is alike? What, it, what data is similar? Um, well, you can take my word for it. Uh, <laughs> so, right. Um, but, but also, it's, you, you can do some analysis on, on the database. Um, it, itself. It, look at the, the types of queries that are frequently executed. So um, there's a great toolkit that Percona puts out um, called uh, uh, Percona Toolkit, it, and PT Query Digest is a tool that you can use to analyze the, the MySQL slow log. So you can just use that type of tool to give you a report on the types of queries that are being done, and then just do uh, explain select to, to see the query execution plans that are generated from those types of queries and then use describe or show table to see the structure of the database schema. And you can see, you can do, do some simple analysis like that. Um, other, otherwise, yeah, just basically trust folks that are writing code in, in those projects, <laughs> so. Okay, thank you for joining, thank you Jay. If you want to try out Galera Cluster, go to galeracluster.com. It's open source, download it. If you prefer Percona server, go to percona.com. They have uh, our, our, uh, uh, their own version of Galera Cluster in there. If you prefer using MariaDB, go to mariadb.com. There is also a Galera version of MariaDB. So thank you very much. It's one big happy Galera family. Yes, we are all. <laughs> thank you.